Now, if you're an avid sim racer like me, then you probably noticed something very wrong going on right now. Forza 3 being driven with a Logitech wheel. And that should be impossible. That is until now. And this little device here, the XCM F1 converter. Its intended purpose is to let you use a wired PS3 controller on the Xbox 360. In addition to that, it has six programmable memory buttons that have up to 20 move combos at the press of one button. But we are here to use this device to use our Logitech G25 or G27 on the Xbox. The instructions that come with it are very simplified and only give one page to the setting up of the wheel. But let's follow along. Turn on your Xbox 360. Then plug in the XCM converter into the Xbox. Then you must plug in a wired Xbox 360 controller into the XCM and wait for it to connect to the Xbox. Then plug in your G25 or G27 and it should immediately go into its calibration mode. When it comes down to running in The Sims, button mapping was impossible because the XCM converter is using your G27 and emulating an Xbox 360 controller. This means that the wheel turning is seen by the game as the sticks moving left or right. It also sees your pedals moving as the trigger buttons of the 360. The top four buttons of the shifter are actually the colored buttons of the 360 with Y at the top, B on the right, A on the bottom, and X on the left. The directional pad on the Logitech is the same as the directional pad on the PS3 controller, and the bottom four buttons are from left to right, with the left one being completely useless, the second one being the back button, the third one being the Xbox button, and the right one being the start button. It is also mapping the paddle shifters as a duplicate of the X and A button, which is most common for shifting on the 360 controller in games. For the record, it sees all of the right buttons on the wheel as the right bumper, and all of the left buttons on the wheel as the left bumper. It has a similar error with the shifter and sees all upward gates as the A button and all downward gates as the X. It means that you can sort of use the shifter as a sequential of sorts, but you'll have to pull it back into neutral yourself after each shift. Knowing this will help you pick the layout that you like per sim and know what the buttons will do. For Forza 3, I use Layout 2. For F1 2010, I use Preset 1. Need for Speed Shift use Configuration 2, and Race Pro use Configuration B. I think you see where I'm going with this, and each game worked with varied levels of success. I also tried the Thrustmaster F430 and had no luck at all. I then tried the Fnatic GT3 RS and was able to get it working, however it had no force feedback. Still a huge step ahead of using a gamepad. At their website, I found an update that would allow for the use of the Logitech DFGT. I downloaded the firmware update for the XCM. It requires a PC and has good instructions at the website. Install the software, plug in the XCM to your computer, load the update file, and you're updated. Once everything is updated, just plug the XCM back into the Xbox like you did before. Plug your DFGT into the XCM just like you would have with the G27. Here's a picture of the button layout for the DFGT using the XCM converter. Now that it's all set up, when we return, we're going to see how each of these Logitech wheels actually work on the Xbox 360. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. I started out with Forza 3. The other key was to also change the advanced wheel settings and turn the dead zone all the way off for the wheel and the pedals. Some games also allow you to adjust the sensitivity and I found this to be the most valuable adjustment to get the sensations that I wanted. I found somewhere between 60 and 100% sensitivity to be best for me. Once set up and running, I immediately felt some sort of force feedback going on. However, they are not the forces that I have become accustomed to. There was definitely some pull of the wheel on the throttle a bump on the wheel for gear shifting. When going off-road or running over curbs, there was definitely some vibration felt, and when hitting a wall, it would result in the wheel yanking one way or the other. However, in the G25 and G27, there was no clutch or H-pattern shifter support. 
Using the DFGT, I found the exact type of feeling from the wheel. I also tried out F1 2010, Race Pro, and Need for Speed Shift. For F1 2010, I had a very similar experience with the throttle affecting the wheel, shifting causing a bump, curbs and off-roading causing vibration, and big hits causing the wheel to jump. It worked again for Race Pro as well as Need for Speed Shift, each one giving very similar results. There's no doubt about it that there is force feedback going on, but it seems to be somewhere between a rumble pad and the force feedback delivered from a normally plugged in wheel. It almost seems that the wheel is being sent rumble pad signals for a controller, but when sent to a force feedback wheel, this is the results you get. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. First, the cons. It's just not real force feedback. This is some kind of faux force feedback. Yes, it lets you use the wheel, but it's not the same force feedback when it's working properly. Next, non-adjustable controls. Since the games think it's an Xbox 360 controller, it just automatically gives you that control and the common layouts for it. Also on the cons, it must be plugged in each time your Xbox is restarted. You'll have to go through the whole startup procedure to be up and running. And lastly is the expense. The XEM F1 Crossfire Converter comes in at $80, but in addition to that, you're also gonna need a wired controller to be able to use the wheel. Now onto the pros. Well, being able to use your Logitech wheel on the Xbox. This is something many people have wanted to do for a long time, and now you finally can. Next, it's fairly easy to plug in and use. Despite the inadequate instructions, it was pretty easy and worked every time I tried it. Next, it can also be used for first-person shooters with multiple strikes saved into memory. And lastly on the pros, this is a big step up from using a game pad on the Xbox. Despite the fact that this doesn't deliver the type of force feedback that I was hoping for, it still allowed for me to use my Logitech wheels on some of my favorite sims of the Xbox. Forza, F1 2010, Race Pro, and Shift are all better games being able to drive instead of holding a controller, and that is a big plus. If you own an Xbox and own Logitech wheels for your PC or PS3 racing, then this product was made for you. But when adding $80 for the unit, plus a wired controller, it really is a bit of money for just mediocre results. For the money, for the results, there is still no beating the Fnatic GT2 when it comes to Xbox racing. Proper force feedback, proper adjustability, proper control mapping, the use of the clutch and shifter all make it a better solution for the Xbox racer. Well, they always say, where there's a will, there's a way. And here's my will, and the XCM is the way. So I hope this helps you if you have a Logitech and you've wanted to use it on the Xbox. You can check out the XCM converter for yourself at www.xcm.cc. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.